This is a geek leader. Hey guys, John Rauta back again with episode 67 of A Geek Leader, and last week on the show we had author Tom Rath on, and he talked about um, some of the books that he had written, we talked about how they apply to leadership, and how some of the things that you can implement today to help your health and well-being and happiness um, of that and of your employees um, when it comes to being a leader. And I want to talk about some of the things that I've personally taken from the books that Tom's written and just kind of dissect them a little bit about the little nuggets that I've used in my life that have made me a little bit healthier, a little bit um, better at work, and um, more creative, more energized, and a better leader. So I want to start with Eat, Move, Sleep. And the book Eat, Move, Sleep, Tom talks about um, certain things that you should eat that are better for you and healthier for you, and how you can make small changes that are more sustainable than, rather than large changes within your life, and then things you can do to move more, to be more active and things that you can do to sleep better. So um, over the past couple of years, I've implemented some of these things, and some of them more recently than others, and some of them I implemented back a couple years ago, and I'm still holding strong with that. Um, One thing is walking meetings. Now, I don't do a lot of walking meetings today, but I do make it a point to get up and walk regularly. And at my last job, I did some walking meetings whenever um, I would do one-on-ones. Occasionally, I would take a person, and we would just go and walk around the pond and have our one-on-one while we were walking. I still do that occasionally here, but uh, most of the time I'm not doing walking meetings, but I am getting up and walking in between meetings um, at work. And I think just the movement is very important. Um, In the book, he talks a little bit about hitting the 10,000 step goal. That should be an attainable goal for most people. And I'm very fortunate at where I work uh, full-time, we have a walking program that encourages people to, to do that. So my personal goal, which I did before I came here, of hitting 10,000 steps is something that I maintain while I'm at work now because I get incentivized for it. Um, some of the ways that I hit that 10,000 step goal is, like I mentioned, is I walk in between meetings occasionally. And doing that just helps my mind uh, get cleared out. It helps me take a different perspective of things. It, it puts a stop on one thing and makes it a fresh start for something else instead of having two ideas or two meetings or two uh Uh, projects blending into one another i think having that break and being able to separate and take a little walk outside separates those things and keeps them um, compartmentalized a little bit better another thing that i do i mentioned in my podcast with tom is i'll go up up flights of stairs um, every time i need to use the restroom instead of using the one closest to me Um, that does a lot of things not more than just get steps it also um, helps me be more present when it comes to seeing other people in the organization that i might not normally see being able to walk up each floor. And I don't just go straight up all the way up the stairs. I usually walk up one, one flight of stairs to the second floor. I'll walk across the floor. So I see people on the way. I'll say hello um, or at least wave. People see my presence and I see them. Go to the next set of, of stairwells, walk up one flight to the third floor, walk across, and, and do that over and over again. Um, and that, that's just one way to be more visible on the floor and allow those serendipitous moments to happen where you run into someone and, um, and, and have – Uh, an encounter where you might hear about something or learn about something um, that you normally wouldn't have. It also helps you get those 10,000 steps, which is pretty important. Um, Another one is standing. I'll occasionally just stand up and and talk to people standing instead of sitting. It used to be one of those things where I went to a meeting, I wanted to sit right away. Um, Now I make it a point to try to stand a little bit longer, either before or after the meeting. And every now and then during a meeting, I'll just stand up um, and continue to talk and just try to stretch my legs. And um, it depends on who's in the meeting, obviously. (laughs) Um, Before you do that, you don't want to just do that in any meeting. But standing more often is important. Um, It helps just get us out of that routine of sitting. And I have an Apple Watch, and that's one of my goals is to stand at least um, for one minute every hour for 12 hours. And um, I, I'm proud to say that ever since I've had the Apple Watch, I've reached that goal every every single day. Um, another thing that I learned from Eat, Move, Sleep was about sugar and how bad sugar is for you. I am always knew sugar wasn't good for you, but I never really thought that it was as bad for you as, as it's turned out to be. And with some other podcasts that I've listened to with Dr. Ron and Patrick and some other shows where people have talked more about the consumption of sugar and, and, and how bad it really is, um, it's kind of one of those things that I've tried to make a, a more active approach of cutting that out of my diet. Um, before I read Eat, Eat, Move, Sleep, I used to use sugar in my coffee. I have since um, uh, stopped using sugar in my coffee. 
Um, a big part of that was just, you know, just cutting out the sugar. And I think it makes me feel better. Um, I don't have the crash that I used to have in the evenings. Um, I used to think it was a caffeine crash, but I no longer attribute that to caffeine. I think it now it's, it's a sugar crash um, from not having the sugar in my coffee, just having the caffeine doesn't seem to affect me the way that sugar did. Um, cutting out fruit juices. Uh, Tom talked specifically on the podcast about how, how fruit um, juice is not necessarily the way fruit was designed to be ingested by us, and that's not a healthy, healthy way of doing it. It's the equivalent of, you know, he said like a, a cup of apple juice is the equivalent of eating the sugar out of 10 apples, and we normally wouldn't sit down and eat 10 apples in one sitting. We would, we would spread that apart. Another thing that I found that was in this book that we didn't talk about is that the fruits themselves contain fiber that slow down the processing of that sugar, so it's not uh, a huge rush of sugar that comes with the fiber that helps us metabolize that a little bit better. Um, so I cut down on fruit juices and cut down on bread. I still love bread. I eat bread. I, um, I'm not, you know, completely carb free, but just reducing the amount of bread that you eat on, on a daily basis has made a big difference. And one thing that I've noticed whenever I do splurge and have like pizza or, um, something that's got a lot of carbs, and a lot of bread in it, sometimes I'll feel sore the next day. It, it like usually in my joints, I'll, I'll have like a, a little bit of joint pain. And I, I originally attributed that to, um, just getting old <laughs> you know in fact i'm getting older my joints are starting to hurt but the more i started correlating with what was my diet the day before when i woke up this morning and my shoulder hurt or, or my knee hurt or my ankle hurt or something like that what was my diet the day before and if it was a bad you know healthy not, not healthy diet if it was just like full of carbs and full of unhealthy foods uh, i started to realize that oh Maybe that's the cause. Let me eat really clean today. And what I've noticed is after a day or two, my joints don't hurt anymore. And if I go like two weeks without eating uh, bad and just eating pretty clean and pretty healthy, no joint pain. Um, whenever I you know, splurge and eat a whole bunch of bad stuff. Now, if I just have pizza every now and then, that's not a big deal. But if I like really go bad for a couple of days, then my joints start to hurt again. And, I, and I've been able to correlate that together as, as pretty much being a, a carb-based issue. All right, and another thing he talks about in the book is sleep. Now, I am not um, <laughs> a very good sleeper, but we've made some changes in our life. We've gotten a new mattress. We've gotten some things that will try to help us uh, sleep better, me and my wife. And um, putting that in place, I think, has helped a little bit. It's still new to that phase. I haven't been doing the uh, practice of good sleep. That's one thing that happens when you have uh, a newborn. We've got a, an eight-month-old, and having a baby – makes getting good sleep kind of difficult but i'm working hard on that one and that's going to be something that maybe i'll update down the road when i revisit some of these health things and talk more about sleep in the future hopefully i'll have a better update on that one um another book that i wanted to talk about was are you fully charged and in that book tom talks about different ways to get the most out of your day and um be able to to be as energized as you can be and to help others out. And he talks about working in burst. And one of the things that I took from that was uh, the Pomodoro technique. And I've been using this for a while whenever I have to really focus on things. I don't use it constantly. It's not something that I'm, I'm always 100% of the time working 25 minutes on or five minutes off or anything like that. But if there's something that I really need to sit down and focus on, there's a hard uh, problem that I need to code or a document that, like a policy document that I really need to sit down and focus and write, then I'll use the Pomodoro technique. And I find that I can just knock um, difficult work like that out much quicker if I focus on something like that, turn off Slack, turn off Outlook, turn off Messenger, all those things, and just focus for 25 minutes, let the timer go off, get up, turn back on Slack, answer any messages, check the email, check my messengers, et cetera, and move forward with that. And I found that is so, so helpful for me. Um, uh, another thing that he talked about in Are You Full of Charge is that we shouldn't search for happiness. We should search for meaning. And when you find meaning in what you do, happiness just kind of comes along with that. It's kind of like a bystander that, that comes along with it. And I think that's pretty important because we're always trying to find what, what work can we do to make us happy. It's not necessarily about the work making us happy. It's the meaning behind the work that makes us happy. And um, in my TED Talk, I talked about putting purpose with things that we do. And I find that putting purpose behind things is, is kind of that meaning that you're missing that will lead to the happiness down, down the road. Um, Strength Finders 2.0. If you're like me and you've uh, gone through the Strength Finder uh, exercise and you found out what your core strengths are and learned to focus on that. Now, when I did the Strength Finders, probably it was three years ago, I uh, stuck them to my door. And they were on my door for over a year. So that way, anybody that came into my office saw those. And anytime I came into my office, I was reminded of what those strengths were and to focus on that. Now, one of the things that I you know, blindly um, <laughs> did the first time I read the book was to kind of ignore my weaknesses and not really 
focus on that because I was too busy focusing on strengths. But what Tom mentions is that you really can't give up your weaknesses. Just don't make them your highest priority. You still have to work on them. But it's not going to be – you don't just completely ignore all your weaknesses. You need to be aware that they're there and um, focus your work around those those weaknesses. And that's an important thing to do whenever you are um, – uh, whenever you find out what your strengths are and what your weaknesses are, don't just give up on your weaknesses. Just keep them there, move around them, focus your work to focus more on your strengths, but be aware that your weaknesses are there. It's really important. Um, and in Tom's book, How Full Is Your Bucket? The big takeaway that I had from that is, is something I call give what you want. Give what you want. And what he talks about is that what, what, he, he, what he found was that whenever you want to fill up your bucket – if you take from others to fill up your bucket, it actually lowers your bucket. And what he's talking about with bucket is kind of like your, your sense of happiness, your meaning, your purpose, the way that you uh, – your outlook to the world. And whenever – but what he found is that whenever you fill up someone else's book bucket with gratitude, with um, um, positive thoughts, with energy, with uh, positivity, all those things actually cause your bucket to fill up too. So when you take things away from others, it actually lowers your bucket. But when you give to others, it fills up your bucket. So the way that I kind of attribute that is – what I call give what you want. If uh, you want more attention at work, then give more attention to others. If you want more recognition at work, give recognition to others. Give what it is that you want, that you need, um, and you'll find that, that that satisfies that need with you, but it also encourages those around you to pay that forward and pay that back to you. So that's kind of an important thing that I got from How Full Is Your Bucket. Um, I'm going to link to these books as well as the other books from Tom um, in this episode. So if you just go to a geekleader.com, um, you will find episode 67 and you can go through and just link to it. So Tom's books are, are you fully charged? The rechargeables, which is a kid's book, which would be a great Christmas present to get for your kids. Um, how full is your bucket for kids is another kid's book that you could look at. Eat, move, sleep, strength finders, 2.0 strength based leadership. How full is your bucket? Well being and vital friends. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode and, and uh, got something out of the takeaways that I took from the book. If you have takeaways from this, any of these books, I would really love to hear those. You can go to a geekleader.com and just uh, leave me a voicemail there. You can uh, send me an email there. Uh, and also you can post it to Twitter. I'm at John Rauta. And one last call to action. And if you have not yet subscribed to the podcast or left me a rating review, please, please do so. Our numbers are way up this month from uh, last month. Um, and we're being picked up on different places. We're now on Spotify, iHeartRadio, iTunes Podcast, Google Podcast, Google Play Music, um, Podbean, um, Player FM, lots of different locations you can get that. And if you go to com slash subscribe, you'll see all the different locations where we're at today. And there'll be a few more coming, coming in the future. So uh, I'm really, really grateful for everybody that listens to the show. But if you could just leave me a quick rating review, that would be awesome. Thanks so much. I appreciate it.